Hi hey everybody, and this is data modeling. And so for part one, it's just going to be kind of, we're going to chit chat about it. Uh, so we're going to talk about a few things, a user on a website, a kitchen in a restaurant, a plane in an airport, a book in a library. And what I thought I was going to do was just talk about all of these, but I'm thinking it's going to be a better idea if I talk about one of them. So that way, if you can't think of something in your own life to model data related to it, then just pick one of these. So I'm going to do a kitchen in a restaurant. So let's go over to our replit. And we're going to say, describing a kitchen. So we could say something like, variable kitchen is equal to a place where food is made. There are several employees. Um, it operates from a certain time to another time. A uh, place where food is made. Um, a place where dishes are done, um, managers, uh, you know, cooks, servers, dishwashers, um, repositories uh, for ingredients, you know, stoves ovens, no microwaves. I right, found a microwave. Um, you know, surfaces to finish preparing food. And as you can see, what we've done here is we have uh, modeled with data a kitchen, and we've done it very poorly. The idea is that there's really no way for us to know what is going to be inside of the string. You just have to read the entire thing and be able to interpret all of that. So what we might start doing would be Rather than just creating a string and then listing everything about it, we might start doing, uh, you know, start describing it as an object. We might say something like variable kitchen is equal to a collection of properties. And for this, what we would put inside of here could be things like, uh, let's say, you know, hours in operation. And we could say hours in operation could be, maybe, maybe hours in operation is a string. So let's say maybe it's, uh, you know, opens at, let's say, 10.30 a.m. to, uh, let's say, you know, 9 p.m. And that could be one of our properties. And then we think, what else could we put into our kitchen? Um, serves breakfast could be equal or could be have a value of uh, false, maybe 10.30 to 9 p.m. and they don't serve breakfast. Um, you know, employee list. And now we can start picturing that the employee list, well, this might be an array. So we could model the list of employees present in a kitchen uh, could be an array. And from here, we could say something like maybe like cooks, maybe a chef, uh, servers, um, servers, cook, chef, who else? Dishwasher. And I feel like there's one I'm missing. Manager. So there you go. There's our employee list. And what else would be in a kitchen? As you can see, what we're doing here is we're starting to picture how we would take real world scenarios and make them into data that our program will understand how to work with. So uh, we might even have something like serve lunch. And serve lunch could be a function that does something, you know, inside of the kitchen. But eventually, you're going to start to figure out that everything that you do in your life has trained you to become a programmer because you've gotten those things done for the most part. Even if you just got up, ate, and went back to sleep, you could think about everything that you had done during that day in a data modeling mindset. So that's pretty much it. We don't want to get too in depth with this. This is just an idea of starting to picture things in your life as objects, as arrays, as Boolean values, as strings, um, as numbers. And, and that's pretty much all. What we're going to do after you do a little free form practicing on your own, maybe try to create a user on a website, see if they would have like a username, maybe a last registered sign in time. A plane in an airport could have a number of engines, it could have a number of passengers available, it could have pilot is there, safety checks performed, a book in a library could have, um, you know, a section. Actually, to be honest, a library might be more fun to model than a book, but a book itself could have a number of pages, it could have a type size, it could have, 
uh, number of copies sold. It could have a copyright date. There could be um, you know, descriptions about its physical appearance, the color of the book, how heavy it is. So have fun with that. Try to find, pick something from your, from your life, and if you can't think of something, try to pick a user on a website, a plane, a book, a better kitchen, anything like that, and just kind of play around with it for a little while. In the next part of this lesson, we're going to talk about one way to use an object to model data. Um, and it's going to be a little bit more esoteric. We're not going to be actually modeling anything specific like we just did. It's more going to be using an object to count elements. So with that, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.